like First of all, Alexa, I mean, the UFC barely does this, that they customize belts, uh, and they're doing, doing it for, you know, Mexican heritage, for your title fight. Um, how nice is it to see the UFC focus on, on your culture and on this uh, special date on September 16th? Well, this is special because, um, as you notice, Mexico has been growing so fast and so nice in the sport. Honestly, having Mexican champions was uh, a few years ago kind of impossible, so it's a big, big motivation for me. Uh, what Brandon has done, Jair what has done, Irene what has done, and every single Mexican in the card. Right now we have a, a card in an Independence Mexican Day. This didn't happen in another country, so this says a lot about Mexican support in every single fight. You almost have to like pinch yourself, like, is this really happening? Because as you mentioned, you go back a few years ago, and this was really hard to, to imagine, right? Well, um, it's been a dream come true, and the most important thing, it's full of training, <laughs> a lot of training, a lot of training to be able to be in this moment right now. Do you think this is the best possible scenario for your first title defense, uh, Mexican Independence Day, um, you know, being celebrated, Mexican heritage, plus, you know, a, a big rematch, maybe one of the biggest fights in the division's history? Um, do you think this is like the best case scenario for your first title defense? Yes, well, I, I always say that making history is never easy, but I've been working so, so hard every single day of my life to be at this moment, and um, this last camp wasn't different. You know, I was training more. I was with more discipline. I was like two, three times extremer <laughs> with my training and with everything that has to be done to be uh, at the champion again, to win the fight again. And, you know, I just try to keep focus on, on the goal. <laughs> yeah. And what's it like to show up in Vegas and seeing your face everywhere? Uh, billboards, T-Mobile, new uh, magazines, I mean, even, like, just covers of, like, tables and everything. What's that been like? It feels great. You know, it's always um, for an athlete to achieve all these big, big moments, you know, to have in, in Las Vegas a lot of pictures of yourself. It fools my heart, you know. It fills a lot my heart. And it just gave me a lot of motivation for this Saturday. Yeah. And um, I, I got to ask you, you, you are sort of, you are the last uh, right now Mexican champion. Obviously, we saw Jair lose his interim and um, Brandon lose his undisputed. I'm wondering if, if that fuels you even further just to kind of keep the flag at a championship level in the UFC pressure. How do you feel about uh, your stance right now? Um, no, I don't think it call it pressure. I think it's more motivation, you know, like, we have done so much in the sport. We've been evolving so, so hard. And this keeps me with tons of motivation to keep the belt in Mexico. Yeah. And uh, lastly, um, Valentina, after your fight, mainly said that, yeah, like, g gave you some credit, but really emphasized the fact that she felt like she made an error in the fight. And it was that because you know, what led her to losing the, the belt. I'm curious to your your reaction to her response as, as to why she lost the belt. Uh, well, um, it just kind of surprised for me because someone with such big experience and competing at this high, high level, we know that there are no accidents. You know, um, I trained for that moment and you also can see the, the video that I have behind the, um, before the fight. You know, I was training exactly that same position. So it was... It was something that I trained to win that fight. Lex, over here. Lex, the last time out, you fought Valentina at UFC 285. Both of you had loud ovations inside the arena, but there's a good chance that you steal all of that this Saturday, right? How is it like and how eager are you knowing that you're going to fight in front of a home crowd that's most likely going to be 100% Alexa Grasso on Saturday night? Well, I hope, you know, she, she's very famous too. You know, people love both of us, which is beautiful, you know, to have a lot of people cheering for both athletes in a such big event, such main event. So it's going to be huge. I'm truly thankful for every single person that has the time to come to the event, that will be there with their flags and cheering for, for Mexico. And uh, one of your teammates is here, Diego Lopez. What's it like for you seeing him debut in the UFC and putting up those great performances he has thus far? Well, I've seen his career uh, for a long time. You know, we we had a tough moment before getting in the UFC. I know what he's capable of. Um, he's doing great, and I think you're you're looking his evolution. And of course, my evolution in my my jujitsu game. It's thanks for him.
en uh, un anexo español. Um, Alex, obviamente este fin de semana va a ser la primera vez que la UFC tiene un evento en el Día de Dependencia de México. Dana White ha dicho que están construyendo un PI en México. Como, como campeona indiscutible mexicana, ¿cómo se siente ver el avance mexicano en las artes marciales mixtas? Um, obviously, Dana, uh, first of all, the, fir the first ever event on Mexican Independence Day for the UFC, and also uh, Dana White mentioned um, that they talk, talks about the, the PI in Mexico right now. So how do you see the advancement of being the, the undisputed uh, Mexican champion right now? How do you see the advancement of MMA in Mexico? Bueno, para mí es algo muy importante todo lo que está sucediendo en México. Tenemos muchos guerreros. Ustedes saben que cuando un mexicano se sube a pelear, deja absolutamente todo, siempre damos unas guerras, eh, no importa la adversidad, siempre estamos ahí luchando por, todo, por todos nuestros sueños, por cumplir nuestras metas y eso habla de todos los resultados que se están ahorita dando para México. Estoy segura que con el PI, que con toda la ayuda que nos van a dar, tanto de nutrición, en terapia física, en entrenamiento… Todo, todo México va a cambiar muchísimo de los peleadores y va a ser un gran avance en la cultura mexicana en el MMA. We have so many warriors right there. We always go to war. I mean, everybody knows that when a Mexican steps onto the octagon, that's what we're going to give. We're going to leave it all out there, and that speaks volumes for them. I mean, it speaks for the results that, that we've achieved. And I think that with all the help, with the PI, with nutrition, with physical therapy, with all the training, I think that you're going to see even more coming up. Y obviamente el tema de la noche va a ser México y los peleadores mexicanos, pero tu oponente, Valentina Shevchenko, es ciudadana peruana. ¿Qué significa para ti ver dos mujeres que representan Latinoamérica ser pelea estelar en una cartelera grande? And of course, uh, being in Mexican Independence Day and, and so much focus on Mexico, uh, your opponent too represents Peru. So what do you think about two women of, with, representing Latin America to be in such a high stage? Para mí es algo muy importante. Eh, Creo que es el deporte en el que más rápido las mujeres han crecido y evolucionado casi a la par de los hombres. Ahorita somos estelares, cuestelares, las peleas realmente son muy emocionantes y, y que las dos representemos a Latinoamérica es algo, es algo muy grande para mí. Um, it's so awesome. It's just such a big thing. I mean, I think this is the sport that women have evolved the, the most and quickest and to the highest level of any other sport. Um, if you think about it, we're we're doing um, we're in main cards, uh, we're co-mains, and uh, it, it's just to see us in a situation is just a, a very exciting. Fight. And we actually very exciting fights as well. So it's very I'm very happy to have him. Gracias. Lex, uh, uh, Willie Ramirez with the Associated Press. You hear professional athletes always say. You don't want to like get too high with the highs, too low with the lows. Six months into being the champion, how have you tried to maintain a level of hunger that you had before becoming a champ and, and sort of not letting that desire get away from you, not get too high on this high um, and maintain the same level of competitiveness and drive that you had when you were a challenger? Uh, well, this is thanks to my team. My coaches, they are always, you know, Uh, trying for me to always be focused, you know, like, yeah, you're the champion, but you're just one more in the gym. You have to help your teammates, you have to evolve, you have to be every day here on time, on time, you know, do everything that we ask you to do and more. So um, I think the most important thing to, to be at this high level and to keep motivating and to keep the hunger and to do my best to evolve and to improve, it's thanks to my team and my coaches. I'm not sure how much you pay attention to some to other sports, especially when you're training for a big card like this, but um, we're coming off the US Open, Coco Golf wins, right? The WNBA playoffs get started tonight, including here in Las Vegas. We have two incredible martial artists, if you will, you know, getting ready for Saturday night. Um, what does it feel like just to, see the evolution of women athletes right now and you being a part of, of sort of the spotlight? For me, it's huge. Like I said, um, of course, women started always after men in every single sport, but right now we are looking how much we are evol uh, evolving. You know, our technique is better, our heart is better, our, you know, we're a main event right now for Mexico, so this is huge for us. So it's it's really nice to be part of this elite athletes that are representing their country, their sport, um, their city, in, in every single sport we are competing. Great, thank you. Hey, Alexa, over here in the front. 
Um, I noticed just a few minutes ago, uh, you and Valentina were in the lobby together. Have you guys spoken at all? Has there uh, been conversation since the last fight between the two of you? No, no. Um, we always say hi, you know, for respect. We have respect for each other, but no, we, we didn't have a, a chat. Is that something that you purposely avoid having conversations with your opponents and maybe wait till after, or, or what, is it just that it hasn't happened yet? No, it hasn't happened yet. Thank you. Alexa, Alexa right, here. right over here. Felicidades. Gracias. Um, big fights happening at Flyweight. I was just wondering, what did you think of the victories for both Aaron Blanchfield and Manon Fior? Well, I'm super happy of Flyweight division. Um, this was the last uh, weight class in the organization. Um, now we are giving a lot of results. Uh, now we are having a lot of great athletes. I think they both have a great winning, and I'm happy for the division. Do you care who would be the next title challenger? Uh, I mean, right now I'm focused on my fight this Saturday, but after, you know, if everything goes like my plan, um, maybe on Saturday now we can talk about that. Um, I know it's not a competition, but do you think that your special belt is better than Yair's that he got earlier this summer? No, it's made for the same person. Um, I know them. I've been in the in this place where they do these pieces of art. So it's just another piece of art, and it's beautiful. And I'm I'm just happy. And I think each one of them has their special meaning because every single patron in there has different um, expressions. Uh, final question: You've been in the UFC for a long time now. You've been a part of a lot of like other stuff, the posters and everything that they make. The fans really like the poster for this fight. I'm wondering, is this your favorite also? Because it's got a lot of the Mexican, you know, influence in it and everything. Well, I think it has a lot of um, Mexican things, you know, because of the importance of the date, of the people who's fighting in the card. So it has a lot of uh, personality of every single Mexican fighter. So for me, yes, this is the best one. <laughs> Thank you. Alexa, right here, to your left. Your, your influence is evident through you being on the cover of GQ for Mexico. You're headlining this event. For you, in looking at younger generations, not only in Mexico, but all around for MMA and uh, women athletes, what is your message to the younger generations? Well, that's always my goal. You know, I've been always trying to be a good example for the next generation, especially for the girls. I would like them to see me as a guide. Of course, I'm not perfect. I'm I'm not perfect, but I would like that with my example, they can notice that you can live working like every single day doing what you love the most. Like you can change your life. You can have a better life, a better quality life, food experiences. So working hard and dear hard work has always been my, my, my hashtag. And I just hope that every single girl in the planet could learn MMA, defend themselves and be strong physical and mentally. Segwaying from your hard work going into the octagon, last fight it went your way, you got a lot of things done and did it the right way for you. What are you trying to replicate and add on to to get your hand raised on Saturday? Well, uh, of course, you know, I love striking fights. <laughs> and it was going pretty well on the striking department, but I did a lot of adjustments just in case she don't want to strike with me. But um, I'm excited too because she came back to Thailand to to do Muay Thai again, so this excites me so much, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be an amazing fight. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Alexa right here. Uh, six months ago, you shocked the world. Not a lot of people gave you a chance that you beat Valentina Shevchenko to become champion. Last week, nobody gave Sean Strickland a chance to be Israel Adesanya, and he did the same. Did you see a lot of yourself in what Sean did last week? Because everybody counted him out, everybody counted you out, and he emerged victorious, and you did the same thing. Well, it's a, um, a tricky moment, you know, when you have all the doubts, when you have everything against you, I think that motivates you. I think that uh, that says you like, why are all these people thinking that I'm not capable if they don't know me, if they don't, um, if they really are, aren't too deep in what I'm doing in my training, I'm super disciplined and I'm pretty sure that did, that he, did that, you know, when you have a lot of doubts, it just motivates you a lot to give your best and to show like, hey, I'm capable and I'm here and I'm uh, and I will earn it. 
do you still think you have something to prove on Saturday night, even though you are the champion? A lot of people think Valentina had a bad night. Are you here to prove that it wasn't a bad night? It was about your preparation. Of course, you know, having to be the champion is the first step. You know, like climbing the ber climbing the best the the first mountain. But once I have it, and I just turn my head and I just realize there's another big mountain to climb because uh, I want to defend it. I wanted to keep it. Um, I want to, to show how much I've been evolving all these months. Last question for me. Val Valentina is on the cover of the EA UFC game. If you win and, you defend, and defend this title, do you want to state the case that they made a mistake and that you should have been on the cover of the game? No, I don't think they made a mistake. You know, we can't forget about everything she has done for the sport. She's a big, big uh, star. And, you know, it's not like just a win quits you all the credit you have done. Just, just right now, I have to earn that. I have to have a lot of title defenses. And then after, I would hope that I can have my, my face in the cover of the game. Alexa in the middle. Traditionally, Mexican Independence Day weekend had belonged to Canelo. And most recently, he had headlined multiple cards at T-Mobile. Have you had any conversations with his camp yet? Have they reached out to at least congratulate you? Uh, no, not yet. I'm not. Um, he's super huge. He's uh, something that someone that I admire so much. We're from the same city, uh, but I hope that with my achievements and you know be winning uh, someday, I could have a training with him. <laughs> um, as a follow-up to that question, do you allow yourself to have these moments sink in and actually celebrate what you've achieved? Because there's always something more. You're in a rematch, but do you just allow yourself to have the moments to appreciate what has happened so far for you? Um, you know, as a, an elite athlete in, in combat sports, we know that we don't have much time. So right now I'm celebrating coming back to the gym as soon as possible, you know, to do rehabilitation, to heal all my injuries and come back the best way I can to the gym. So that's how I celebrate because uh, I know, I don't know how many years I, I have left in the sport. I also have 30 years old right now. So I'm just trying to do the best I can with the years I have. So um, the best way to do it is training, doing my best and then then I will have the time enough to enjoy and celebrate and do everything I want. Alexa, back here. Uh, this is your first rematch, and I was just kind of curious, has there been a difference in your confidence going into this one, knowing that you can beat Valentina? Well, of course. You know, we also shared the octagon 20 minutes before. I know what she has. I felt her body. I felt her power. I felt everything that she can bring to the table. And... That's why I prepared myself better. I did a lot of adjustments. My coaches did a lot of adjustments. So um, I know what I'm capable of, and I'll do my best to win again. And just kind of touching on those adjustments a little bit, obviously you did very well in the striking against her. And you know maybe she did better on the ground than in the striking against you. And so I'm curious, how big of a focus was takedown and grappling defense uh, in this camp particularly? A lot, a lot. Of course, the striking is number one. Always. And jiu-jitsu and wrestling game is always improving, always improving, always improving. And this, was, this wasn't this was different. There are a lot of adjustments in the jiu-jitsu department. Definitely. And I know you're obviously focused on this one, but you got this great achievement now, becoming a champion. I'm curious if you look ahead at all and think about, like, what's the next big goal? Like you said, you want to defend and do these things, but do you think about becoming a double champ or anything crazy extravagant for the next big kind of mountain to climb after this fight? Um, no, right now I'm focused just on 125. I want to have the most title defense as I can, I can do. All right, best of luck. Thanks. Alexa, back here in the back here. I was just kind of curious. It's been 19 years since Ronda Rousey made her UFC, uh, UFC debut, and she's done so many wonderful things for the sport and, and becoming a champion and so forth. I'm kind of wondering through the years, as you see the fighters today, how those skill sets have kind of changed among, among the fighters now, from, from then to today. Well, we've, we've seen a lot of changes. You know, the rules are different. The, the, I think that before it was more noticed when you had a striker versus a grappler or a wrestler versus karate. Right now we have everything. It's not just one, one game plan. Now we have complete athletes. That's, I think that's the most um, important difference now we have. Alexa, gracias por tomar tiempo de hablar con la prensa. Gracias.
desde que te convertiste en campeona, ¿qué tanto ha cambiado tu vida? Claro, las cámaras no pueden captar todo, pero una historia que nos puedas contar de la gente que antes te dudó y ahora te dan abrazo o las puertas que se te han abierto desde ser la reina de tu categoría. Uh, since you became a champion, um, obviously a lot of things have changed in your life. But we want to know what, what has changed in your life besides the fact that everything, everything that you do is on camera right now. Everything's the same. But can you tell us a story about you know people that were with you along the way, people that came, that came to you after you became a champion? So what has changed in your life? And a story you can tell us. Pues mira, la verdad es que yo les digo, mi vida no cambió mucho mi vida sigue siendo la misma, sigo siendo la persona, eh, trato de mantenerme siempre simple, enfocada y entrenando, porque la fórmula que me trajo hasta este momento fue entrenar todos los días, tres veces al día, todas las semanas, todos los meses, casi todo el año, entonces creo que eso es lo más importante, ¿no? mantenerte igual y acerca del de, eh, trato de las personas, sí, sí ha habido personas que me dicen, yo creía que ibas a perder, pero pues me demostraste lo contrario, otras personas me dicen, gané muchísimo dinero, eh, las personas, pues yo creo que es lo más bonito, ¿no? Poderte el ganar el corazón de esas personas que dudaban en ti sin decir nada y solamente demostrando tu trabajo. Um, in reality, my, my life hasn't changed much. I mean, I've just, I've been the same constant person, same thing at the gym. I mean, I, it's the formula that brought me here, that helped me achieve what I got to. So I'm there I, training as much as I can, training three times a day, every day, every week, throughout the entire year. So, I mean, that, you, you, you become a champion, you, you continue to do that to, to maintain yourself and to keep where you are. But also, it's so beautiful to actually see people. There are people that came to me and said, I doubt it. I thought you were going to lose, but you won there and you, you, you won. And I mean, I, my mind has changed. And some people said, I made money off of you. So it's so awesome to see that I but was able to actually get uh, the recognition and, and to conquer these people and just conquer their hearts and say, listen, I was able to, to, to change their perception. Gracias. Y finalmente, para mí, ¿qué tan difícil es ahora o, o fácil posiblemente mantener esa disciplina? Porque es obvio que eres súper estrella, pero poder separar eso de Alexa, la, la compañía, y Graso, la que se va a mantener disciplina y continuar en el, uh, defendiendo su título. And last question for me, how easy or how hard is it for you to continue with that consistency? How can you separate Alexa, the fighter, with Alexa, the personality, the star that's out there and has her obligations? Eh, pues mira, yo creo que eso es lo más bonito de todo. ¿no? En mi equipo tengo a, a mis maestros y a mis compañeros que, que siempre me recuerdan que es lo mismo. Soy la misma persona. No hay diferencia en que si es una estrella o no es una estrella, no. Soy un atleta que trabaja bien duro todos los días y eso es lo más importante. O sea, dejar al lado todo lo demás. Tú eres un atleta de alto rendimiento que estás aquí para dar lo mejor todos los días en la clase y en las competencias. Y bueno, eso es lo que me mantiene ahí, lo que me mantiene enfocada y lo que me mantiene con tanta disciplina. And that's the cool thing about my team. My team is there to remind me that I need to continue to be the, like that, that simple life. It's, you're, you're here. Uh, you, they keep me focused. You're going to continue to do what you did. You're a high performance athlete now. Um, you, you, you have to be in the gym at all times. You, you have to be with us all, all the way. So the team has been able, able to keep me focused on, on the task at hand. Gracias. Felicidades con todo lo que has logrado y uh, suerte el sábado. Gracias. Alexa, un, un par en español. No te pregunté, ¿qué te pareció el, el cinturón? Si nos puedes dar un review de, del cinturón. Um, eh, I, a question for you in Spanish. What did you think of this belt? Now that you've been able to actually see it. Es la primera vez que lo veo así en persona. Ya lo había visto en fotos. No quería preguntarles a los artistas qué significa cada patrón. Me quería esperar hasta después de la pelea, pero les voy a preguntar, les voy a preguntar qué significa cada uno de esos eh, patrones tan bonitos que tiene. De verdad está impresionante, no podrías creer que está hecho a mano de lo, de lo bonito que está. Es, es una obra de arte súper bonita. Me encanta y me encanta, me encanta. Uh, I had never seen it in person, I only saw it in pictures. Then I really wanted to actually ask the artists about the patterns that you see here because they're so beautiful. I mean, I wanted to ask after the fight, but I'm asked, I, I really want to know what each of those patterns mean. But it's so beautiful. I mean, it's really, it, it's amazing. Uh, each and every single one of them, I know that's eight. Uh, it's made by hand, so it's truly uh, a, a beautiful uh, a work of art, and uh, I love it, love it. ¿Te enorgullece ver los colores de tu cultura en el cinturón de UFC? Um, and of course, the pride of seeing all the colors of your culture in, in a UFC belt. 
Sí, me deja muy emocionada, estoy muy contenta y más que nada por lo que ya les mencionaba, ¿no? México está creciendo muchísimo en el deporte y creo que estas son señales de lo bien que vamos los mexicanos. Um, brings me a lot of emotion, of course, very happy. And, and as I said, I mean, this speaks volumes for, for everything as Mexico has been doing and for uh, what, what, what have we accomplished in bringing here and I mean, the, the, the worth of all Mexicans in yeah, MMA. Y, y este evento es especial, es la primera vez que UFC celebra la independencia de, de México, ¿no? De esta manera. Eh, ¿Crees que ya México está en una posición para tener talento y hacer esto una tradición, algo que veamos anualmente, fin de semana de, de, de independencia de México, evento de UFC celebrando el talento mexicano? And of course, the first ever event on Mexican Independence Day for the UFC. Do you think that Mexico has gotten to a point right now? the amount of talent, the amount of recognition that it deserves, that you should have this as a consistent and constant event every year. Es la meta. <laughs> That's the goal. Oye, y rapidito, mencionaste a Canelo. Eh, Canelo ha peleado en Guadalajara. Eh, me imagino que ese es un sueño también de llevar un evento a Guadalajara, tu ciudad. You mentioned Canelo. Canelo has fought in Guadalajara. I imagine that's a dream of yours to actually fight in Guadalajara. Claro que sí, claro que creo que con mi trabajo tengo que seguir haciéndolo mucho mejor y mi meta y mis sueños poder llevar un día a la UFC a Guadalajara. Uh, of course, uh, and then I think my, one of my goals is actually to continue to get to improve, get better, to one day bring the UFC to Guadalajara. Gracias. Gracias.